It seemed just like an ordinary box. The wood was old and weathered. The fastenings were heavy brass and the lid was inlaid with ornate silver symbol. My father willed it to me after the state executed him for murder. He left no explanation or instruction, only the small, mysterious wooden box. At first I considered tossing it into a river. The last thing I wanted was a reminder of the man that had abandoned his son in favor of a life of violence. But being the weak, willed person that I am, my curiosity soon overwhelmed me and I couldn't stand the mystery of the box no longer. Opening the box, however, was easier said than done. Attempts to pry open the latches with my hands yielded only a bridge fingers and broken nails. Screwdrivers were snapped, hammers were shattered, and drills motors burned out. Yet the contents of the box remained out of reach, encased in a wooden tomb determined not to yield its secrets. Eventually I gave up, doing what I've always done when I can't get what I want. I told myself that whatever was inside was not worth the effort and did my best to forget about it. But the box would not allow me to forget so easily. And one night, while I was sleeping, it opened it, opened it of its own accord. I awoke to the eerie silver luminance that filled in my room, my bedroom, and a deep sense of pervasive cold that chilled the surroundings to absolute stillness. As I sat up in my bed, I was overwhelmed by a sense of unfamiliarity, as it, as if I had been transported somewhere that looked very much like my bedroom, but w was home to someone or something else. The silver light was emanating from beneath my closet door, leading a sense of unreality, unreality to everything that baffled its pale sheen. Casting odd shadows that seemed to creep and move in the corner of my eye, I could feel myself standing up, though I had not willed myself to do so, and slowly, quietly, I crept towards the closet. My fingertips brushed the knob, recoiling for a moment from the penetrating cold. Then, resolutely, firmly, I grasped it, pulling the door open to reveal the box. The hinges had sprung open wide, the light spilling forth with piercing and intense. My eyes filled it with, with the light and felt as if they could soon burst. Yet I could not tear them away. I could feel myself falling slowly forward into an abyss of silver light that enveloped my horizons and became my entire being. Just before it swallowed me, the box snapped shut and I found myself on the floor. My sweat drenched cheeks pressed tightly against the cold rough wood of the box. I pushed myself back to my feet. The eerie silver light was gone and my room seemed once again my own, yet something was still not right. The cheek that had touched the box was throbbing with a burning pain. I wandered, I wandered into the bathroom and flipped on the lights, gasping at the grotesque reflection. At my grotesque reflection. The symbol on the box, on the top of the box, was burning into my cheek. I reached to touch it, uh, but as I did, so it faded. But the brand was not the only souvenir the box had left with me. I could feel a presence in me, in my mind. I find myself missing time, awakening in strange locales with, splattered, with blood splattered on my clothing. But that is not what worries me the most. What worries me the most is the call I received from my lawyer yesterday, asking for clarification on the amendment I had made in my will. He wondered why the only thing I wanted to leave my son when I died was an unopenable wooden box.